Welcome to the new Way Things Work, the fully revised and updated product of many years of painstaking scientific research on the part of myself and my colleague, the Woolly Mammoth. Here you will find fascinating revelations about a variety of everyday appliances and the principles that govern their operation, such as those of levers, electricity, and, of course, the wheel. I have also elected to share with the world some of the most original insights furnished by our scrupulous scientific observations, some of which reached a more successful conclusion than others. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumble Bear's Let's Play. I'm Kristen, and we're here with another wonderful DK game. This is the updated, the new way things work. The uh, updated version of the way things work. I hope you enjoy. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Do you remember this game or the original one? Let me know, and of course subscribe for more nostalgic gaming so you don't miss out. Be sure to check out the playlist in the description box to see all of the other DK games on this channel. I have a Twitter and Instagram you're welcome to follow, a streaming channel, and a Discord server with the kindest community on the internet. All the links are in the description box, so come join us and say hi. Alright, let's start learning. Enjoy.
A bolt can be turned with a simple blank key. Such a lock would not be very secure. With added tumblers, the lock can only be opened with a special key. The key must lift each tumbler by just the right amount to release the bolt pin. When the bolt is home, springs force the tumblers back down, locking the pin in place. When there is no sound, the battery charges up the diaphragm and the fixed plate, but there is no electron flow through the resistor, and so no voltage between the output wires. When a sound wave pushes the diaphragm in, the plates can hold more charge, so electrons flow onto the diaphragm and away from the plate. The flow of these electrons through the resistor creates an output voltage across it, so electrons may flow along the output wires. When the sound wave pulls the diaphragm out, the plates can hold less charge, so electrons flow away from the diaphragm. This creates an electron flow in the opposite direction. To make a local telephone call, you dial the code of your local exchange, followed by the number of the telephone that you want to reach. Hello? To make a long distance call, for example from Chicago to New York, you first dial the area code for New York. Computers at the Chicago Exchange route the call the quickest way. You then dial the code of a local exchange in New York, and finally, the number of the telephone you want to reach. I'm sorry we're not home right now. Please call back. As the engine runs, the water in the cooling system heats up. This in turn heats the wax, which expands, opening a valve. The water can then circulate around the cooling system. This stops the engine from overheating. As the water cools, the wax contracts, closing the valve. This prevents the engine from becoming too cold.
The drum charger gives the drum a negative charge. An image of the document is then projected onto the drum. Where light falls, the charge is lost. As the drum rotates, it picks up positively charged toner from the toner bin, but only in areas that are still charged. These are the dark areas of the document. The paper charger gives a piece of paper a negative charge. The paper is then pushed against the drum. The charged paper attracts the positively charged toner particles, making a copy of the original document. When a free electron strikes a mercury atom, it knocks one of the atom's own electrons into a higher orbit. When the electron falls back, it releases a wave of ultraviolet light. This light energizes one of the electrons in a phosphor atom. On falling back, this electron releases a wave of visible light.
When you dive, the pressure of the surrounding water pushes the diaphragm inward. This pushes on a lever which opens the air inlet valve. As air flows in from the tank, it pushes the diaphragm back out, closing the valve. The air is now at the same pressure as the water. When you breathe in, the suction pulls the diaphragm inward and the valve opens to let in more air. When you breathe out, your breath pushes open the exhaust valve and bubbles out into the water. When you press a key, the damper moves away from the string. The key then forces the wipen upward, which swings the hammer against the string. As soon as you take your finger off the key, the damper drops down and stops the note.
A pulse of current fed to the coil in the detector head produces a magnetic field. The field induces currents in any nearby piece of metal. This current creates a magnetic field in the object, which in turn induces a current in the coil. The current is detected and an audible signal alerts the treasure hunter.
The negative charge at the base of a storm cloud produces a positive charge in the ground. This can result in a dangerous and destructive lightning strike. Buildings can, however, be protected with a lightning conductor. Ions produced around the tip of the lightning conductor flow upward, reducing the electric field in the cloud, often preventing a lightning strike. If lightning does strike, it will tend to follow the path of the ions between the cloud and the lightning conductor and will flow safely to the ground. Pressing the set button depresses the diaphragm, readying the tester for a sample. As the driver blows into the tube, a pressure sensor is activated, 
Light A comes on and a timer starts. Light B comes on when a suitable sample has been taken. Pressing the read button raises the diaphragm, drawing the sample into the fuel cell. Alcohol vapor in the sample causes the cell to produce a current. A microprocessor translates this current into a reading on the display. When you push the button, you complete the electric circuit so that a current flows through the wire. This activates the electromagnet. As the armature moves toward the electromagnet, the hammer strikes the bell. The contacts open and the electromagnet is turned off. Now the spring pulls the armature back, resealing the contacts, and the cycle repeats. Normal light falling on the display is polarized as it passes through the front polarizer. If a segment is off, the light is twisted as it passes through the liquid crystal layer. This means that it can pass through the rear polarizer. It is then reflected back by the mirror and the segment appears light. If the segment is on, however, the liquid crystal does not twist the polarized light. The light can no longer pass through the rear polarizer and the segment appears dark.
כן. When the seat belt is pulled slowly, the belt shaft turns freely inside the clutch. Tugging the seat belt rapidly, however, flings the toothed plate out and into the clutch's teeth. When the clutch is engaged, it is also turned with the belt. This movement brings the pawl into contact with the ratchet and prevents further movement of the shaft. When you turn the laser on, the cathode produces electrons which move through the gas towards the anode. One of these electrons collides with a gas atom. This collision gives one of the atom's own electrons the energy to jump into a higher orbit. As the electron falls back into its original orbit, it loses its extra energy in the form of a tiny burst of light rays called a photon. When this photon hits another energized atom, the atom produces its own photon with waves exactly in step with the first. These photons hit more energized atoms and a chain reaction starts. Growing numbers of photons bounce back and forth between the two mirrors, creating an intense beam. The beam builds in intensity until it bursts through the semi-silvered mirror as a laser beam.
The surface of a magnetic disk is divided up into tracks and sectors. To record information, the reed head moves to a track containing an empty sector. Information is sent from the computer to the drive as a stream of binary numbers, that is, zeros and ones. An electromagnet on the head records each number, or bit, by changing the magnetic field on the disk's surface. Each bit is recorded in a fraction of a second as the disk spins. To retrieve data, the disk is spun past the head, which reads the magnetic fields on the disk, sending signals back to the computer. A sliding metal guard covers the disk surface when the disk is not in use. A lever inside the drive pushes the cover back when you insert the disk. A plastic shell protects the disk inside and keeps it flat. Inside the casing, a pair of gauze pads protect the disk, reducing friction and keeping the disk clean. A metal hub allows the motor to grip the disk securely and spin it at the right speed. In the induction stroke, the intake valve opens and the piston moves down, drawing in fuel and air. Then, in the compression stroke, the intake valve closes and the piston rises, squashing the fuel and air. In the power stroke, the spark plug fires to ignite the fuel and air. The powerful explosion forces the piston downward. Then, in the exhaust stroke, the exhaust valve opens and the piston rises, forcing the exhaust gases out of the cylinder. The cycle repeats, with the piston moving up and down many times a second. When you want to calculate a sum, for example, 56 times 9, you start by keying in the first number. The microprocessor stores the code for the number in its memory and then sends the code to the display. You then press a key to tell the calculator what operation you want it to do. For example, multiplication. The code for this is also stored in the memory. You then input the second number which is again stored and displayed. Finally, you press the equals key. This tells the microprocessor to look in the memory, perform the operation on the two numbers, and send the result to the display. Light hitting atoms in the p-type layer freeze electrons. These electrons are attracted to the n-type layer. Electrons from deeper in the p-type layer replace those which are lost. As more light rays hit the cell, electrons flow around a circuit as an electric current before returning to the bottom of the p-type layer.
To make a recording, you press the record button. This pushes the record playhead against the tape, presses the tape between the cap stand and the pinch wheel, and starts the motor. The erase head wipes out any recordings already on the tape. Signals from the microphone cause current to flow in the coils inside the record playhead. This creates a magnetic field. The field changes in intensity, copying the intensity of the sound waves you want to record. The changing field magnetizes the tape, making the recording. First, the drum charger gives the drum a negative static charge. The laser beam, turned on and off according to the pattern to be printed, changes the charges to positive on specific areas of the drum. The drum attracts negatively charged toner only where there is a positive charge. Positively charged paper pressed against the drum picks up the toner, creating the image. The gear wheel turns freely on the transmission shaft because it has a ball bearing at its center. Selecting a gear moves the collar along the shaft to the gear wheel. The collar's dog teeth lock into the gear wheel. The collar has no ball bearing at its center, so it turns the transmission shaft.
When you turn on the X-ray tube, electrons flow from the negative cathode towards a tungsten target set in the positive copper anode. These electrons produce X-rays in two ways. First, an electron may be slowed and deflected by a tungsten atom, giving off an X-ray photon as it loses energy. Second, an incoming electron may knock one of the tungsten atom's own electrons out of an inner orbit. An X-ray photon is produced as an electron from an outer orbit moves in to take its place. The tungsten target is angled so that the X-ray beam emerges from a window in the side of the tube. To raise the helicopter vertically, the pilot raises the swash plates. As the angle of the rotor blade increases, the helicopter rises. When the pilot lowers the swash plates, the helicopter descends. When the pilot tilts the swash plates forward, the lift at the back of the rotor increases. This moves the helicopter forward. When the pilot tilts the swash plates backward, the lift at the front of the rotor increases, and so the helicopter moves backward. Pushing the control lever opens a spring-loaded valve to allow compressed air into the drill. The air pushes one side of the diaphragm down and flows to the underside of the piston. The pressure of the air forces the piston upward. This squashes the air above the piston and tilts the diaphragm the other way. Air can now flow into the top of the cylinder where it forces the piston downward to strike the tool. As the piston falls, air escapes through the outlet. The diaphragm flips once again, and the cycle repeats.
When the large front fan rotates, it draws in air. Some of this air flows along the bypass duct. The rest flows through the compressor blades, which raise the pressure of the air. The high pressure air enters the combustion chambers, where burning kerosene heats it. The heat causes a huge rise in air pressure, so it powers the air at high speed through the rear of the engine. The hot air spins the fan turbines, which drive the engine. It then meets with the bypass air and speeds from the exhaust with tremendous force. When you press a button on the remote control, to change television channel, for example, the microprocessor sends a pulse signal to the transmitter LED. The LED changes the pulses of electricity into pulses of infrared light, which travel across the room. At the receiving end, a photodiode in the television changes the infrared pulses back into electrical pulses. A microprocessor in the television interprets the pulses and changes the channel. La la!
The smell of a mammoth sleeping quarters was notoriously bad. To control this problem, keepers trained their mammoths to sleep on mats, which had to be changed with some regularity. Moving a beast to change the foul-smelling fabric, however, was not an easy task. One day, I observed that a certain keeper had less trouble than others. I was astonished to see that by easing one end of a long pole beneath the creature's massive bulk, the keeper had constructed a simple lever that enabled him to lift the mammoth single-handed. A recently discovered document proves the enormous intelligence of mammoths. A knight and his trusty mammoth were trying to rescue a beautiful princess trapped in a tower. The knight charged up the steps of the tower, only to find that the door was locked. Now the mammoth had a bright idea. Holding a tree trunk, he began to turn the tower. And to the knight's amazement, the tower began to screw itself into the ground, so the princess could leap to safety. I once came upon a delivery mammoth, preparing to transport a screen. During a sudden gust of wind, the beast was perturbed to find himself lifted into the air, returning to the ground when the wind dropped. Inspired, I began my own experiments and found that a curved screen resulted in a smoother flight. Even so, screen deliveries remained somewhat unpredictable. Catching a mammoth involves stunning the beast with a gentle blow to its sensitive skull. However, raising the boulder high enough was quite a task, and not always successful. Huh? After much thought, I suggested replacing the tall towers with ramps made of earth. Not only did this require much less effort, it also increased the rate of mammoth capture. And once caught, the mammoth was eager and ready for work.
The first use of mammoths for entertainment was in the famous carousel experiment. Carrots were used to bribe the mammoths to turn one wheel. But even though the mammoths moved with alarming speed, the crowd still appeared bored. I therefore had the mammoths move to the larger wheel, and the chairs hung from the smaller one. This new arrangement proved to be much more exciting. Due to the nature of their job, stunt mammoths require regular bathing. However, an unwilling mammoth can use its weight very effectively to avoid being dragged to the wash tub. On one occasion, I witnessed an ingenious use of liquid soap and marbles. Once spread beneath the animal's bulk, they greatly reduced its resistance to washing, but sadly not its irritation. I found on my travels that mammoth milk was highly nutritious. Though obtaining it was a dangerous task, the animals being notoriously touchy. I decided that some form of harness was needed. I used a system of wheels to lift the beast and was surprised to find that the more wheels I ran the rope over, the easier it was to lift the mammoth. Although obtaining the precious milk was indeed easier, my mammoth harness was still in need of a few modifications. When my mammoth boarded a local ferry, the water seemed eager to join the animal on the raft. To my surprise, the raft sank. I solved this problem by building a wall around the raft, preventing the water from getting on board. Because we were still soaking wet when we got to the other side, I lit a large fire in our tent to dry us. Our journey, however, was to continue in a rather uplifting manner. I recently came across an ingenious use of mammoth power. A cam-powered hand cracked the eggs of an extinct bird, and a crank-powered shovel pushed away their shells. It appears the contraption was part of a new restaurant chain dedicated to serving omelets of mammoth proportions. The bulky mammoth can move with surprising grace, as I discovered when one young animal borrowed my unicycle. The wheel's rotation aided the beast's natural balance. He became alarmed, however, when the massive wheel resisted his efforts to stop. A pond ended his dizzy trip, but the spinning wheel continued to throw mud far and wide long after the crash.
Despite their placid temperament, mammoths are ill-suited to inside work. But their love of the outdoors makes them eager helpers in an agricultural environment. During one particularly heavy coconut harvest, mammoths were used to bend the palm trees so that the farmer could reach the nuts. However, problems arose when the mammoth became distracted and released the rope prematurely, distributing the coconuts, the farmer, and the mammoth far and wide. Cellular phones work by sending and receiving messages via a network of transmitters. A phone finds out which transmitter is nearest to it by checking which of the available signals is the strongest. This information is used to identify the phone's current location so that calls to the phone can be directed to the right place. Any calls made from the phone will be sent to the local transmitter, which relays them to the central switching office. From here, they can be routed to other mobile phones or into the main telephone system.
the lawn sprinkler works using the power of the water that comes into it. The water comes in, turns gears and cranks, and makes the arm oscillate back and forth, covering a very wide area. In some cases, too wide an area. Mechanical clocks have been around for hundreds of years, and they use something called the pendulum to maintain a regular order, a regular rhythm. Inside the clock, we have a system of gears which turn the hands so that we can actually read the time on the face of the clock. Just in case of emergencies, we have a lot of fire extinguishers in the warehouse. Some are filled with water, some with powder, some with CO2, depending on what kind of fire we have but they all have a small cylinder of high-pressure gas. When I press the lever, the high-pressure gas forces the contents out. I keep my warehouse safe with two of the commonest kinds of locks, the lever lock and the cylinder lock, and they work in much the same way. The bolt is held in place by springs, which the key raises, allowing the bolt to turn and you to unlock the door. Springs come in all different shapes and sizes. There's the coil spring that you might find in your mattress or on the legs of a mammoth. There's the leaf spring, which supports the weight of a truck so it doesn't bounce around too much. And there's a little tiny spring called a hair spring, which you would find in a watch. And it's that spring that keeps the watch turning. Pressing the key causes a hammer to strike a string, which vibrates and produces a sound. As long as I keep my finger on the key, the sound will keep playing. Inside the piano is a complex system of levers, which allow me to play very quickly and with a wide range of volumes. Springs come in. We use pulleys to lift things. If we want to lift something that's relatively light, we just pull on the rope and it will go up in the opposite direction. But if we need to lift something very heavy, we're going to need a collection of pulleys fastened together around which the rope travels. And then when we pull on the rope, we can lift something really enormous. Ooh. Wheels are among the earliest inventions. Because only a small part of the wheel touches the ground at any one time, they greatly reduce friction. But of course, once they get rolling, they can go on and on. We use a faucet to control the flow of water. There's a handle on top of the faucet, which when we turn it, turns a screw, which pushes down on a rubber seal called a washer. That's what stops the water flowing, as long as the seal is tight. This is my electric guitar, and when the amplifier is turned off, you can barely hear it. But when the amplifier is turned on, it's the noisiest contraption in the warehouse. The hot air balloon is basically just a big bag of air. And when we heat the air inside the bag, it expands, forcing some of the air out of the bottom 
which means that the balloon then starts to rise. What the balloon cannot do, however, without help from us or the wind is to move horizontally. The single lens reflex camera allows the photographer to see what they're taking a picture of. The light passes through the lens and is reflected off a mirror to the viewfinder. When we click the camera, the mirror pops up and the light strikes the film. Perfect pictures every time. To project a movie, we need two lenses and a very bright light. The first lens, the condenser lens, shines the light evenly on the film. The second lens, the projector lens, focuses it on the distant screen. Hi there. Click on this button to jump to a random screen. The electric bell makes use of the principle of electromagnetism. Stop. The electric bell makes use of the principle of electromagnetism. When the electromagnet is turned on, it draws the hammer and strikes the bell. When the magnet is turned off, a spring pulls the hammer back. Now, as long as I keep my finger on the button, this process repeats itself over and over. Stop here. Friction isn't always a bad thing. Car tires, for example, are made of rubber so that they grip the road better, making it easier for the car to turn and to stop. All right, let's drive on. Stop. The hair dryer creates a powerful blast of hot air, which can be easily directed. It's the hot air that helps the water evaporate much more quickly than cold air. But even this isn't going to help us dry the mammoth. Wings are very important in helping an airplane to fly. Not because they flap, and in fact if they do flap, bail out. But because of their shape. They tend to be curved on top and sort of flatter on the bottom. And as the air moves past the wing, it moves more quickly over the top which means that the pressure below the wing starts to push the plane up. But this only works if the plane is actually moving. The hot air balloon is basically just a big bag of air.
The computer is set to change the way we all live our lives in the 21st century. Jobs, education, even shopping will be affected by the digital revolution. Uh, excuse me. Uh, could you just hold on a moment, please? Sorry. As computers get smaller, they're going to take over the functions of other machines, such as telephones, answering machines, televisions, and video recorders. Uh, I think it's under the sink, Mom. Here in the warehouse, we have lots of lights. And for safety's sake, they're all on string poles. So that if your hands are wet, you need to turn out the light, you won't get a shock. The string poles keep you well away from danger. X-rays pass through most materials, such as our bodies but they're absorbed by metals, and the calcium in our bones is a metal. So with x-rays, doctors can see our bones and see whether there are any breaks or other problems. Nothing wrong here. Television is one of this century's most influential inventions. Billions of people tune in around the world for news and entertainment. With satellites, live programs can be beamed as they happen as long as we have the technology to pick them up. One day, while in search of some companionship for my woolly friend, the mammoth and I arrived at an impressive set of gates where we encountered their guardian, Bill, who informed us that we might find what we sought inside his digital domain. As soon as the mammoth was safely inside Bill's gates, eager assistants began to gather data on every aspect of his considerable being. This data was quickly recorded and then sent for conversion. Using rows of crates and countless pumpkins, the data was translated into patterns. I was interested to observe that the number 237, for example, became pumpkin, 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 no pumpkin, 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 no pumpkin, pumpkin. I have to admit that the complexity of the next pumpkin sorting process was impressive even to an experienced inventor such as myself, although things would perhaps have become clearer had I not missed its conclusion. 
as the response to Bill's pumpkin data arrived, I witnessed an extraordinary process by which a stream of fruit could be transposed into a visual representation of information, albeit a slightly sticky one. Bill soon announced that he was ready to unveil what he called his Virtual Mammoth Simulator version 1.0. As the images created from the processed data combined with realistic stereo sound, our friends certainly seemed to be thoroughly immersed in the experience. It appeared that his lonely days as the sole representative of his species might be at an end. At least, until he tried to get a little too interactive. A global positioning receiver calculates its location by a process called triangulation. Each of the GPS satellites orbiting the Earth transmits details of its position and the current time, and the receiver picks up these signals. The data travels at the speed of light, which is always constant. This means that the computer in the receiver can calculate its distance from each satellite by comparing the current time with the time at which the data was sent. When three of these distances are combined, they give a unique location on the Earth. This is the receiver's position. A digital versatile disc, or DVD, can store more information than a CD because it can hold more than one layer of data. The infrared lasers used to read a CD are not capable of the accuracy required to read the smaller pits of a DVD, so a red light laser is used, giving a thinner beam which can read these tiny pieces of information. The outer gold layer of a DVD is semi-transparent so that once it has been read, the laser can refocus to read the inner silver layer. The laser beam can transfer from one layer to the other almost instantaneously, so there's no interruption of sound or pictures coming from the disc. One day, while in search of some companionship for my woolly friend, the mammoth and I arrived Drying mammoth clothing has often created problems of shrinkage. I therefore hired a blacksmith to build a mammoth-shaped clothes dryer. During the construction, a thunderstorm swept overhead and a bolt of lightning hit the metal dryer. The blacksmith's tools flew through the air and attached themselves to the clothes dryer, dropping to the floor when the lightning had passed. Both blacksmith and mammoth were overwhelmed by the experience. Despite their placid temperament, mammoths are ill-suited to inside work. But their love of the outdoors makes them eager helpers in an agricultural environment. During one particularly heavy coconut harvest, mammoths were used to bend the palm trees so that the farmer could reach the nuts. However, problems arose when the mammoth became distracted 
and release the rope prematurely, distributing the coconuts, the farmer, and the mammoth far and wide. I recently came across an ingenious use of mammoth power. A cam-powered hand cracked the eggs of an extinct bird, and a crank-powered shovel pushed away their shells. It appears the contraption was part of a new restaurant chain dedicated to serving omelets of mammoth proportions. The first use of mammoth Firefighting mammoths have learned to take in enough water to extinguish a blaze. However, getting the water out is more of a problem. But if the water-filled mammoth is placed in front of a sturdy post and firmly squeezed with a piston, the water is forcefully discharged. Unfortunately, the mammoth's powerful inhalation can create a serious hazard for onlookers. The bulky mammoth can move with surprising grace, as I discovered when one young animal borrowed my unicycle. The wheel's rotation aided the beast's natural balance. He became alarmed, however, when the massive wheel resisted his efforts to stop. A pond ended his dizzy trip, but the spinning wheel continued to throw mud far and wide long after the crash. The smell of a mammoth's sleeping quarters was notoriously bad. To control this problem, keepers trained their mammoths to sleep on It was common practice for farmers near my laboratory to harvest lemons using a copper lance. I decided to help by equipping the workers' mammoths with some lightweight zinc rods which I had left over from an earlier experiment. I was surprised to see both workers and mammoths seized by invisible forces each time they speared a lemon. Although the farmers were shocked by this turn of events, I could foresee some useful applications for this new source of power. I once came upon a forest mammoth who could both count and remember several numbers at a time. His enterprising owner, a logger by trade, would tap a tusk once for each log needed. A pull on his tail would send him off to bring back the requested number of trees. I decided to expand the mammoth's skills by teaching him addition. It was a mistake, however, to have him calculate our restaurant bill. Although he got the total amount right, he delivered the answer in logs. I have often observed that the mammoth is capable of sleeping while standing up, sometimes sustaining its inactivity for days on end. While playing golf one day, I noticed that the grass growing in the shadow of a particularly inert mammoth was less green than that on the rest of the course. I decided to see whether images other than those of mammoths could be captured. Back in my yard, I paid a local family to stand in a line at the edge of my lawn. Having designed restraints for the younger members of the family, I had them return for the next five days, each time standing in the same places. The result was a perfect image of the family. Despite investing in a frame for my picture, however, it proved unsuitable for public exhibition. After the runaway success of my pressure-sensitive burglar alarm, I thought of other ways in which the mammoth's sensing abilities could be put to use. I tried one experiment at the airport, using mammoths as metal detectors. 
Large items in luggage were easily located, but I fear the damage caused to passenger relations was irreparable. And so I turned to experiments with mammoth breath testers. The response to intoxicating fumes was instant, but the workforce needed to bring the mammoth round was enormous. Due to the nature of their job, stuntmen... I found... The Mammoth is not renowned for its abilities as a musician. So I was most surprised to witness three brave musicians using a Mammoth to produce innovative music. A tightly strung tail produced an interesting twang. The animal's taut belly made an admirable boom, while a sharp tap with a hammer made the tusks chime quite pleasantly. The resulting music, enhanced by the mammoth's own trumpet call, could only be described as experimental. In the Mammoth Olympics, the crystal discus was a very popular event because of each throw's exciting conclusion. Spare discuses were prepared by my apprentice, but his initial enthusiasm soon gave way to delusions of miniature mammoths parading across the wall. The apparitions were followed by very real smoke and fire. The project lost me a workshop as well as a promising apprentice. Although mammoths must wear shoes to protect their delicate feet, frequent shoe renewal can become a chore. In the search for longer-lasting footwear, the local blacksmith happened upon some pieces of iron of the right size and shape. However, after the first fitting of the new design, a powerful attraction between mm -hmm. the shoes prevented all movement on the part of the wearer. I once came upon a delivery mammoth preparing to transport a screen. During a sudden gust of wind, the beast was perturbed to find himself lifted into the air, returning to the ground when the wind dropped. Inspired, I began my own experiments and found that a curved screen resulted in a smoother flight. Even so, screen deliveries remained somewhat unpredictable. In the mountainous southern areas, villagers communicated by using the age-old system of catapulting mammoth couriers from one village to the next. However, the system was threatened by a shortage of volunteer mammoths. In my new system, stones of varying size represented letters of the alphabet and were collected by a receiver. Unfortunately, the catapulter's aim was not always what it could have been. A recently discovered document proves the enormous intelligence of mammoths. A knight and his trusty mammoth were trying to rescue a beautiful princess trapped in a tower. The knight charged up the steps of the tower only to find that the door was locked. Now the mammoth had a bright idea. Holding a tree trunk, he began to turn the tower. And to the knight's amazement, 
the tower began to screw itself into the ground, so the princess could leap to safety. I have often observed that the thing mammoths love most, with the possible exception of eating, is to sleep in the sun. I found that the heat absorbed by a mammoth during the day could be employed in providing a hot shower. A mammoth can similarly be used to pass heat to a cold bed, the only problem being removing the animal at bedtime. As a commercial concern, a mammoth makes a fine heated clothes press. It is essential, however, to use nimble employees for this task, as the mammoth may resume its original position at any time. When my mammoth boarded a local ferry, the water seemed eager to join the animal on the raft. To my surprise, the raft sank. I solved this problem by building a wall around the raft, preventing the water from getting on board. Because we were still soaking wet when we got to the other side, I lit a large fire in our tent to dry us. Our journey, however, was to continue in a rather uplifting manner. Well, guys, that was the new way things work. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Which invention are you thankful for that was invented? And, of course, subscribe for more nostalgic gaming. Don't forget the playlist in the description box. See all the other DK games on this channel. Remember, you are special and loved. You are never alone. You're always welcome to come back and hang out anytime. Until the next video, God bless. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye, everyone.